with your CIG TV News Update. I'm Donna Bush. Thanks for joining us. Coming up, we bring you details on a dress code policy for all government school students and the NICE summer project gets off to an early start. We begin with the very important news today from the Ministry of Education regarding a new dress code policy for Cayman Islands government high schools and primary schools. The policy outlines expectations in relation to the dress code, which officials are reminding the public is an important component in teaching students the important life skills of presenting themselves in a well-groomed manner and in dressing for purpose. It also helps to instill in students a sense of pride and belonging, says a press release. Each individual school will outline expectations with respect to their own uniforms in relation to the color and style of socks, pants, skirts, shirts, blouses, belts, undershirts, and required PE kit. But let's take a look now at the list of dress code expectations which apply to all of the government schools. Well, students are expected to follow the dress code rules. If a student does not comply with expectations without an exemption being authorized, then consequences, they say, should be applied as described in the student code of conduct, teacher guidance. Students will be penalized for a first, second, and third offense for breaking the rules. Meantime, officials say they realize that praise and recognition are strong motivators for students and positive approaches to recognize and encourage those students who adhere to the dress code will be made. Well, early Monday morning, many of the men and women who signed up for temporary work with the First Summer NICE project were out in neighborhoods cleaning up public areas. Funded and administered by the Ministries of Com Commerce, Planning and Infrastructure and Ministry of Health, Environment and Culture, the two-week program has over 400 people employed across the Cayman Islands, helping to beautify the islands. Well, basically today we're, we're right here behind Cox, cleaning out this place here by George Sean Courts. Yeah, it's a lot of debris and a lot of, most a lot of grass cutting and stuff. The positivity of the program is that we get to get, come out and clean up the community because there's a lot of areas that have a lot of debris and stuff that um, just a lot of people overseeing. So, you know, we got a chance to come out and see what we can do for the community, you know, make it a better, cleaner place because we are a tourist attraction, so we need to be kept clean at all times. We like seeking employment too. Because I need a job, a full-time job. So I do my best right now to see that, um, that I can get a full-time job with this um, clean-up campaign thing. Because so keeping the community clean up and, and get other people that can employ some people that don't have any work, that need work. So it's a good thing what the government is doing right now for helping me and, and the rest of my um, fellow workers too. The project's manager, Levi Allen of the Public Works Department, explained that besides providing much-needed enhancement of the nation's physical environment, the cleanup program will now give workers training and participation certificates as a valuable addition to the resumes of permanent job seekers. Officials say the NICE project is not intended to be a fix-all for the unemployed. It just provides assistance to those between jobs and for others who, for whatever reasons, are unable to maintain full-time employment while at the same time providing services to the community. Well, for a look at our weekly schedule of shows here on CIG Television, you can go online to gis.gov.ky and click on the publications link at the bottom of the home page. If you missed today's news update, you can go to the Cayman Islands Facebook government Facebook page as well as the CIG Television YouTube channel. For now, I'm Donna Bush is always thanking you for joining me, hoping you'll do the same again tomorrow. Until then, bye-bye for now. Boating, fishing, and water sports in the Cayman Islands are great, but keep a cool head. Here are seven tips for fun and safe sea outings. Number one, use a checklist to plan your outing. Check the weather forecast, make a float plan, and share it with someone who is remaining on land, stating where you're going, with whom, and when you're expected to return. Visit your nearest marine supply store to get your safety gear. 
This includes signaling mirrors, whistles, and a flare kit. It's also very important to have onboard flotation devices and life vests for each person. There are different types of vests. Some are for water sport activities, such as snorkeling, and others are for going on offshore boating or on fishing trips. Number two, these items can be lifesavers in case of an accident or bad weather. Number three, use a motor kill switch, especially if you're boating alone. In case of a leak or breakdown, always stay with the boat until help arrives. If you capsize, an emergency beacon or locator device can send a distress signal to inform the authorities of your location. Larger flares will indicate distress to a boat, airplane, or search and rescue officials. Number four. In addition to sunscreen, food, and beverages, it would be smart to have a cell phone. Make sure your marine radio works. Cayman boaters use channel 16 to communicate. Number five. Also, don't forget your anchor and sufficient rope. Number six, boat operators should be familiar with the local waters and reefs, as well as the capabilities and functions of the vessels they are using. Always obey the rules of the sea and the marine environment and have courtesy for others. Number seven, alcohol and salt water do not mix, especially if you're the captain. Some useful contact numbers are 911, the RCIPS Marine Base is 649-7710 and the Port Authority is 949-2055. Smooth sailing all! I'm Jody Ann Powery, I'm the Police Media Officer with the RCIPS and I'm here to give you some crime prevention tips on how to best protect your property. The first thing that we want to discuss is our points of entries. Um, let's start with the front door and then we'll move on to the windows and the back doors or sliding glass doors. The first thing to consider is the front door. This particular front door has two deadbolt locks. One of these deadbolt locks are properly carpentered and the other is not. When your door is properly locked, you'll hear a click at the end and the deadbolts are not able to move. If it is slightly open, then you can push the deadbolt back without having any restrictions. I'll now proceed to show you what your lock should look like when it is properly locked. When it comes to your windows, you want to make sure that your window is locked all the way down because even though the lock is on, if it's not all the way down, it can still be fried. The proper way to lock the window is to make sure that the window goes all the way down to the seal and then you pull across the lock. When you have a sliding glass door at home, you want to make sure that you have secondary locking devices in addition to the lock that comes with the door. One of those can be a simple piece of wood that's jamming the doorway. We want to encourage you to ensure that you don't make things easy for burglars who are looking for opportunities to break into property by leaving your property out in plain view. Some of these items are your car keys, your electronics and your handbags. Make sure that you put these properties away when you're leaving the house or when you're going to bed. When you're going camping or if you're taking your family on a trip, you want to ensure that your property has some sign of life. This can be done by leaving a light on or putting timers on your lights. And we want to ensure that our family homes are safe. In order to do so, we encourage that people take the proper precautions by starting up neighborhood watches or encouraging family members or persons they trust to check on their properties while they're away. 